Are you taking the PSAT in 2024? Here are our predictions on what's going to be on the test. My first prediction is that verb questions like this one will be able to be solved finding the odd answer choice out. So what does that mean? There's always going to be one that's not like the others, whether it's tense form or if it's singular or plural, there's always one that sticks out. So I'm not even going to read this question. I'm just going to look at my answer choices right now. So I have has leveraged, is leveraging, will leverage, leveraged. I'm already seeing that one is an oddball out, leveraged. It's in simple past tense. Has leveraged, is leveraged, that's continuous. And will leverage is future tense. So even though leveraged and has leveraged are still are both past tense, all of these have that extra word there. So D is our odd man out. Let's see if my hack worked. So I'm just going to go to the top of the sentence. Don't even have to read the whole thing. Lincoln's decision was surprising since each of these men had run against him, but historians have praised it, noting that Lincoln leveraged his rival's diverse talents to strengthen his administration. So yep, my hack worked. And if you want to check yourself, make sure you pick the noun that's going with your verb, which is Lincoln. And Lincoln is singular, and we are in past tense. So as you can see, our hack worked. Find the oddball out on these verb questions, and it will be your answer choice. My second prediction is that transition words are going to make or break how easy these reading questions are for you. So what does that mean? Anytime we get to a big paragraph like this, especially one that's dealing with a claim. So let's read this question real quick. Which choice most logically completes the text? So anytime you see a question like that, we know this is going to be an inference question. So all we're doing is writing some sort of conclusion sentence, and all of these questions have some sort of claim involved. So I want to not only find the claim, but scan the text for transition words. Something that's making a point and then maybe countering it or giving some sort of like second point of view about it. So let's read this. To better understand the burrowing habits of AB, the tiger pistol shrimp. Notice I never say these hard science words. So we're talking about shrimp here. Some studies have used resin casting to obtain precise measurements of the shrimp's burrows. Okay, so that's our setup. Resin casting involves completely filling an empty burrow with a liquid plastic that hardens to create a three-dimensional model. However, okay, so there's our transition word. So there's something else happening here. Recovering the model inevitably requires destroying the burrow. Okay, that's a pretty big deal. I'm sure that will come into play later. So I'm going to highlight it. In their 2022 study, MU and colleagues discovered that an X-ray computed tomography, CT scanner, can accurately record a burrow's measurements both at a moment in time and throughout the entire burrowing process. Something that's impossible with resin casting. Okay, so that something is that the CT can scanner can accurately record a burrow's measurement both, both, another nice word, at a moment in time and throughout the entire process. Okay, so that's the counter to what's impossible with resin counting, casting. And why is that impossible? Well, let's go back to our transition word, because recovering the model inevitably requires destroying the burrow. So we want a sentence that is backing up this point here. So let's look through our answer choices and see which one backs up that counter after however. It can only be used on burrows below a certain size. Nope, they never said anything about size. It does not allow for multiple castings of the same burrow over time. Okay, so if we destroy the burrow, we obviously can't have multiple casts of it, so I like that one. Let's just make sure the other ones don't work. The casting process takes more time than A, B takes to construct a burrow. We actually have no idea how long these take. They never told us. The process of recovering the model distorts the resin shape. Probably could be true, but it's not backed up enough in the text. So we will go with what our claim is, which is that the burrow is getting destroyed, which definitely means we can't have multiple castings of that burrow. And there you go. That, however, saved the day. My third prediction is that although most solution questions when referring to linear or quadratic equations can be solved with Desmos, these kinds of answer choices give us an indication that we need to know how to use quadratic formula. 
Why? Because I'm seeing a square root here. So when you put this into Desmos, it will give you a solution, but it's going to be in a decimal and probably kind of a long one. So anytime you see a square root in an answer choice talking about solutions to a quadratic equation like this one, we know we're probably going to need to use quadratic formula because going from a decimal back to a square root is a lot more convoluted than just knowing how to use the quadratic formula. So what is the quadratic formula? Pause this video and try to remember it and then come back and see if you got it right. x equals the opposite of b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So where do we get those a, b, and c's from? This formula right here. So 6x squared plus 5x minus 7 equals 0 is in standard form of a quadratic formula, which is ax squared plus b x plus c equals zero. So our a is six, our b is five, and our c is negative seven, because remember we're plus c. So now all we have to do is plug in. And just by peeking at my answer choices, I'm already noticing that I'm not going to have to do too much work after I plug in. So I know my b is first, so x equals the opposite of b, which is five. So automatically I know I can eliminate b and d plus or minus square root b squared, 5 squared is 25, minus 4 times 6 times negative 7, all over 2 times a, which is 6. So 12, 12, that's good, opposite of b, but I'm only seeing 125, which is a. I don't even have to try to do negative 4 times 6 times negative 7 because I know it's going to have to be 168. And it's positive because it's negative 4 times negative 7. And knowing quadratic formula made this a lot easier, as well as using our answer choices and eliminating as we went. My fourth prediction is that there are going to be some sneaky word problems in here that are going to ask you to make a systems of equation problem. So they look easy, but they actually require a couple more steps than you think. And how can we figure out if a word problem is asking us that? Well, usually there's more than two variables that we can label in a word problem. So let's look through this. And as I'm reading, ask yourselves, what labels are probably going to end up being variables? And then we'll work through it together. A group of 202 people went on an overnight camping trip, taking 60 tents with them. Some of the tents held two people each, and the rest held four people each. Assuming all the tents were filled to capacity and every person got to sleep in a tent, exactly how many of the tents were two-person tents? All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is highlight what the question's asking me, which is how many of the tents were two-person tents? Have you figured out what our variables are? So we have the people, 202 people, and we have the tents. There are two-person tents and there are four-person tents. So how can we figure out what these equations are going to look like? So we always want to start with our totals, 202 and 60. So let's say two-person tents are x and four-person tents are y. So the total number of tents are going to be found just by adding up our x and our y. So how do we figure out what the relationship between x and y in this 202 is? So we have to convert tents to people. So for every one x, there are two people, right? So if we have five tenths, there's going to be 10 people, which means we're taking our x value and we're multiplying it by two. Then we're going to do the same thing with the y. For every y amount of tenths, there's four people. So we have to multiply that number by four. And voila, now we have a systems of equations. Remember, we're looking for tenths that were two people tenths, which is our x value. So I'm going to put this into Desmos we're going to be focusing on the x value of our intersection point. So I put these into Desmos and I'm looking for an intersection point because this is a systems problem and I got 19 comma 41. And remember, I'm focusing on my x value because that's what I labeled as two person tense. So go back and C is 19. There we go. These will 100% pop up on the test. So being able to find the relationship between person and tent is going to be key here. And starting with your totals is really going to help with that. My final prediction is that you do not need to know any big science word in order to answer problems like this. 
Most of the time, when I'm reading problems like this, I'm going to replace any word that feels difficult to pronounce or to deal with as I'm reading with an acronym or another word. And what I'm really looking for here is what's happening at the end of this paragraph. So I'm actually going to kind of just skim through the beginning until I start seeing findings. Anytime you run into a chart and a paragraph, you're dealing with some sort of science experiment that is going to have findings. Let's read through this and try to see if you catch that transition word like we were talking about earlier that's going to help us solve this a little bit faster. And remember, we don't have to know anything about whatever the science experiment is about in order to solve it. After a volcanic eruption spilled lava into the North Pacific waters, a dramatic increase of Okay, so we're going to call these DT near the surface occurred. Scientists assume that the DT were thriving on nutrients such as P from the lava, but analysis showed that these nutrients weren't present near the surface in forms DT can consume. However, oh, there it is. There was an abundance of usable N, a nutrient usually found in much deeper water and almost never found in lava microbial oceanographer. So if reading microbial oceanographer stresses you out, just call these your friends. My friend Sonia and her friends believe that as the lava plunged nearly 300 meters below the surface, it dislodged pockets of this nutrient. So this nutrient being nitrate, which is our friend after that however word. So now we're talking about nitrate. So we know that nitrate is what they believe was dislodged from the lava and it floated upward given that blank. So given that means we're looking up at this chart now. So I'm gonna replace these crazy words with N and P. And then as I'm looking through this, I'm seeing seawater and lava affected area, same thing here, seawater outside of lava affected area. So we have inside and outside. 5 to 45, 75 to 125, same here. So we have shallow, shallow, and deep, deep. So I don't have to know anything about diatoms in order to break this down. Yes? Now we can compare. So we want something that is showing that N is in the shallow water. So look at that. Talk about a contrast. 3.1, way higher than anything else in the inside part. So where the lava affected it. So we want something that's probably going to talk about that number there. So let's look through. At 5 to 45 meters below the surface, the average concentration of phosphate was about the same in the seawater in the lava affected area as in the seawater outside of the lava affected area. Don't care about phosphate, we're talking about nitrogen. For both depth ranges measured, the average concentration of nitrate, yay, were substantially higher in the seawater in the lava affected area than in the seawater outside of the lava affected area. That's our 3.1. I'm happy about that. For both depth ranges measured in the seawater for the lava affected area, the average concentration of nitrate were substantially higher than the average concentrations of phosphate. We're not comparing phosphate to nitrate, we're comparing nitrate in the lava to nitrate outside of the lava. So that doesn't matter to me. In the seawater outside of the lava affected area, there was little change in the average concentration of nitrate from 75 to 125 meters below the surface to 5 to 45 meters below the surface. Outside of the lava affected area doesn't have anything to do with this belief that the lava plunged 300 meters below the surface. So that is wrong. And B was right on that number we were looking for. So no knowledge of this. No knowledge of lava, no knowledge of nitrate, no knowledge of phosphate. Just reading comprehension skills.